I honestly can't believe Akita owners wouldn't do this. It could literally save your Akita's life. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Akita Life. My name is Tony, with me as always is Haga the American Akita. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the number one killer of Akitas. It's something called GDV. It's extremely dangerous and you need to know about it if you own one of these dogs. So we're gonna be talking about what it is, how to spot it, how to prevent it, and everything else you need to know. So let's get into it because this could literally save your Akita's life. So GDV stands for gastric dilation and vulvulus, and it's more commonly referred to as bloat. And the reason for that is because what's actually happening is a lot of air and gas is getting into your Akita's stomach and causing a bloated or distended look, hence the name. And what happens is the stomach can actually flip upside down or twist, which puts pressure on the heart and cuts off blood supply to other important organs. So if your Akita has bloat, it is a medical emergency and you have to get them to the vet for emergency medical surgery right away. And even if you get that emergency surgery, the likelihood of your Akita surviving is relatively low. Unfortunately, you can find dozens of horror stories online of people having Akitas that get bloat, they get the emergency surgery and the Akita still doesn't survive. And the Akita's surgery costs upwards of $6,000. So it's like a double whammy. Not only do you have the heartache of losing your beloved family member, but I mean, $6,000 is so much money, which is another reason why we strongly suggest pet insurance for any dogs, but especially Akitas, uh, because it can just save you so much money and just give you a little bit more peace of mind. You don't even have to hesitate on whether or not you should move forward with a surgery. I'll put a link in the description below of what we use for Haga as far as insurance goes. So you may be wondering how common is bloat in Akitas? Well, it's not specific to the Akita breed. Any dog can suffer from bloat, but it is more common in larger breeds and barrel chested breeds like Akitas. So if you have a dog that weighs 100 pounds or more, the odds of them getting a bout of bloat is upwards of 20%. So that's one in five dogs over 100 pounds. Now the mortality rate for bloat can be as high as 38%. That means if your dog gets bloat, there's a 38% chance that they're not gonna survive. That's super high, that's way too high. So it's really important that if your dog has bloat, first of all, you can recognize the symptoms and get them the medical treatment that they need as quickly as possible, and also take steps to reduce the likelihood of that happening. Now, like I said, just as a note, all dogs can get this, but if your dog is less than 100 pounds, the likelihood of them getting bloat is right around 5%, so it's much less, but either way, if you have an Akita, you should take steps to help prevent it and also know the warning signs. So let's talk about that real quick. So here are the warning signs of bloat that you need to watch out for. First of all is bloating of the stomach. If your Akita's abdomen looks swollen or bloated, that is a sign to look out for. If your Akita has very labored breathing, if they're very antsy, they can't sit still, they're pacing around. If you have them laying on their side and you kind of pat on their lower abdomen below their ribs, if it sounds like a hollow drum, that's another sign of bloat. And of course, eventually your dog will probably pass out. So if your dog loses consciousness, get them to the vet immediately. And this is uh, a case where it's better to be safe than sorry. If you think your dog has a little bit of a distended stomach, but they're not showing any of the other signs, at the very, very least, give your vet's office a call and just talk to somebody who can help you recognize those signs. Because like I said, recognizing bloat as early as possible is gonna give your Akita the best chance at survival. So obviously we don't want our Akitas to get bloat. Knowing the signs and symptoms is great, but if we can help avoid it in the first place, that's obviously the best option. So what are some ways that you can help reduce the risk? Well, there's a few different things you can do lifestyle wise, and there's one really big solution that requires surgery. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But some of the things you can do on the day to day, VCA veterinary hospitals recommend giving your Akitas smaller and more frequent meals. So instead of giving your dog one big meal a day or two really big meals a day, if you can give them two or more meals a day with smaller portions, that is going to help reduce the risk of bloat. Also reducing the amount of uh, energy and exercise they're doing before and after a meal. So when we get Haga back from a walk, we usually like to let him calm down a little bit before we feed him, let his heart rate come back down, let him chill out. 
Of course, slowing the feeding time down will also help. So don't let them just inhale the food. If you uh, hand feed your Akita, that's a really good way to slow down the feeding process. And if you stick around to the end of this video, you'll see a link to our resource guarding video where we talk all about hand feeding your Akita. Uh, of course, um, not letting your Akita run around after a feeding time, which is super difficult because a lot of dogs love to just go nuts and get the zoomies after a meal because they just feel great and they're so happy and full. Haga definitely falls into that category. He loves to go crazy after a meal and sometimes we literally have to like hold him down on the couch to keep him from running around and going crazy. Uh, things like um, not moistening your dog's dry food can help. Um, giving them canned food, giving them quality food, and again, VCA hospitals recommends food with calcium-rich meat meal that have chicken or lamb or fish as one of the first four ingredients. Uh, that's thought to help reduce the risk of bloat. There's a lot of controversy around bowl height. So some people think that a raised bowl will help reduce the risk. Some people say a raised bowl increases the risk. The unfortunate thing about bloat is we don't really know what causes it. So the scientific community doesn't know the cause of bloat, so that makes it harder to stop from happening. When it comes to the bowl issue, because there's conflicting data, I like to just stick with the bowl on the floor. That's more common to how dogs naturally eat, so I like to stick with that. Now, all of those tips may help reduce the risk, but large dogs like Akitas are still a high-risk breed, right? 20% of dogs over 100 pounds get bloat. So what is something we can do to really help prevent it? And that is a prophylactic preventative surgery known as a gastropexy or more commonly referred to as a stomach tack. And in this surgery, your veterinarian will very literally staple your dog's stomach down. So if the dog does get bloat, that stomach can't flip, it can't twist and, and get that blood restriction. So there's a couple things you need to know about gastropexy. Number one, it technically doesn't stop your Akita from getting bloat, right? Because bloat is actually the act of that gas getting into the stomach and making it expand. But what it will stop from happening or help reduce is that stomach flipping upside down because that is when bloat really becomes fatal, when the stomach actually twists or flips. So it stops that from happening. So it's gonna greatly increase your Akita's chance of survival if they do have bloat and it will also make the emergency surgery much less complicated if they have a gastropexy. Now with that said, if your dog has bloat and it's been gastropexy, you still need to go get emergency medical care from your veterinarian. So don't think that just because you've had this procedure done, uh, if your dog has a bloated stomach, you can just not worry about it. You still need to bring them to the vet. It just greatly improves the odds of survival. In fact, as I mentioned before, the mortality rate for bloat can be as high as 38%. With the gastropexy procedure done, it reduces that mortality rate down to below 10%, and possibly even better than that, there is some new data emerging about different types of uh, gastropexy procedures, and some are thought to be a little bit more effective than others, but either way, reducing from 38% down to less than 10% will make a huge difference, give you peace of mind, and potentially save your Akita's life. So some other questions that people often have about the gastropexy or stomach tacking procedure are, is it safe and how much does it cost? And those are valid questions. Most people are having this procedure done on their Akita at the same time that their Akita is being neutered or spayed because anytime you have surgery, whether you're a person or a dog, that you're going under anesthesia, you're gonna be you know, susceptible to infections for any surgery, you're gonna be susceptible to any unforeseen complications. So just having you know, two surgeries done at the same time is much a better option than doing a neutering separately from the gastropexy later on. So most people do it at the same time. If you are not planning on neutering or spaying your Akita, that's fine, but I would still highly recommend getting the gastropexy surgery done. I think it's 100% worth it uh, to do, even if your dog wasn't gonna have another surgery. And essentially what they do is they make a small incision in your Akita's lower abdomen. They go in there and tack it down. The recovery time is about 10 days, 
And the cost can vary, of course, depending on where you go, the hospital, the region that you're in. But most people are going to pay somewhere between $400 to $1,000 uh, to have this procedure done. So it's 100%, in my opinion, worth the peace of mind because I would literally do anything for my Akita. They are just like our dogs are just like part of our family for us. Now, whether or not your pet insurance will cover it will probably depend on your plan. I would say most will not because it is considered an elective surgery. However, if you think about spending, let's just say on average $800 to have this done, the peace of mind it will give you plus the expense it could save you later on is massive. Now, strangely, I have seen some people say that they don't plan on getting their Akita's stomach tacked because they've had Akita's in the past and those dogs didn't have bloat, or they don't think it's worth the money or it's worth the risk to have an unnecessary surgery. To me, I just can't believe that people would choose not to do this. It can save your dog's life. The surgery is relatively safe. If you're unsure about it, at the very least, have an honest face-to-face -face conversation with your veterinarian, get their expert opinion. I'm willing to bet more often than not, most vets will say it's 100% a good idea to do. The risks of the surgery are very low and the positive benefits from it are hard to measure because you really can't put a price on your dog's life. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you have an Akita, want an Akita, or you just love Akitas, this is the channel for you. So hit that subscribe button to support the channel and get more content just like this. If you have an Akita and you've experienced bloat or GDV or had the gastropexy done, please share your experiences in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I always hate to hear about people losing their Akitas to this awful condition, but it is a good reminder for people who are on the fence about whether or not they should do the gastropexy because really if you if you think about losing your dog it's just absolutely heartbreaking so thanks so much for watching and we'll see everyone in the next video